One Piece, Chapter 1085, begins with King Cobra looking in utter shock and disbelief. No one is ever supposed to sit there, as he looks at the throne that was supposed to be empty. The narrator describes the dark shadow on the throne as the impossible ruler. Cobra asks, Who are you? As he believes that no individual should have the power to control the entire world. Emu says, Mu shall address two of the points being discussed, and thou must answer a single question in return, Cobra. Cobra says, I recognize the name Emu. It must be a coincidence, but among the first twenty, Emu dismisses Cobra's suspicion, saying, Such curiosity teeters on impertinence and will not be dignified with an answer. King Cobra replies, However, those initial queries shall be addressed. Emu says, D is the moniker of our ancient enemy. In recent times, it has cropped up more frequently. However, it is nothing but a faint echo. Those who carry the name do not even know of its true meaning now. And yet, this irritation only endures due to Queen Lily's grave blunder 800 years ago. King Cobra is shocked and says, Blunder? Emu continues, the same can be said of those irksome scholars investigating the so-called void century. Without that blunder, there would be no pirates chasing the poneglyphs in pursuit of treasure either. If it were not for Lily's incompetence that day, those vexing relics would never have been scattered all over the world. King Cobra is utterly speechless. Emu says, The release of the poneglyphs was the worst possible outcome for us, so one must wonder whether it was truly a mistake or if it was actually part of some larger plan. King Cobra is stunned, and the five elders get ready with their weapons, preparing themselves. Emu continues, The truth undoubtedly lies in the letter Lily left. So, pray tell, was it a deliberate choice to only refer to her as Queen Lily of House Nefertari? Emu suddenly demands that King Cobra go ahead and divulge the full name on her letter, as written. At this point, Cobra realizes that his situation is dire. He thinks to himself, They've got me. I suppose there really is no chance I'm leaving this room alive. He says, I take it that there is no fib I could tell that would satisfy you enough to let me go. One of the five elders, St. Topman Warcury, replies, Your fate was decided the moment you saw the great Emu. Cobra privately acknowledges that the breaking of the world's greatest taboo cannot be made public and begins to accept his fate. While they were talking, Sabo is hiding near the hall's door, eavesdropping on the conversation. He begins to feel the sinister atmosphere and wonders, what's going on? Before we continue with the chapter, I'd like to ask if you're new to the channel. If you are and you want to be notified when the latest chapter comes out, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification. My goal is to be one of the first channels on YouTube to release the latest chapter of One Piece manga and make it easy for viewers to understand what is going on in the chapter. <laughs> this also helps support my channel with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. Cobra says, The truth is, the letter from Arabasta's ruler eight centuries ago was signed by Queen Nefertari. And then after a pause, Cobra completes the sentence by saying, D. Lily. Upon hearing this, Emu panics and is shocked to hear the word D. Emu launches an attack, which appears as a black arrow that also resembles a devil's tail. Emu's black arrow stabs through Cobra's body with great impact, causing blood to spill out. Sabo instantly jumps into the air. St. Shepherd Jew Peter notices him, but before he could act, he can Sabo uses his signature attack, Fire Fist on the Five Elders. He immediately attacks Emu with another named attack called Odabisha, also known as Smothered Mate. Emu was surprised and says, Where did this one come from? as he blocks Sabo's attack. Emu starts panicking and is furious at the same time, and Sabo is causing havoc in the hall. Suddenly, Strange and dark shadows start rising from all five elders, moving towards Sabo. It becomes apparent that the five elders possess formidable powers, not just a ceremonial role. Sabo says, I was hoping I would be able to take you all out in one move, 
After all, there was no way I could have known that hell was located here at the very top of the world. King Cobra says, You're Luffy Coon's brother, aren't you? You are with the Revolutionary Army and you still stepped in to save me? Sabo replies, Our cause is more concerned with the monsters that sit above the kings and queens of the world. Do you know Luffy somehow? King Cobra replies, He once stepped in to save me too. Sabo laughs and says, That sounds like him all right. The elders, unaffected by Sabo's attack, persist and move toward Sabo. They suddenly strike, but Sabo snatches King Cobra and flees. King Cobra says, Leave me. I'm a dead weight. You have a better chance of escaping on your own. But Sabo doesn't want to leave him behind. He says, Not gonna happen. King Cobra says, There's something I have come to understand, and if you die here, we'll be in trouble because I need you to deliver a message to Luffy and Vivi. Sabo asks, You want me to tell them something? King Cobra says, Tell them we share the moniker D. I finally know the path Arabasta must follow. Sabo was surprised. He recalls his childhood memories when he said to Luffy and Ace, So you both have D in your name. Is that just a coincidence or something? Luffy replies, I guess. Ace says, Who cares? A name's a name. Luffy says, Do you want a D in your name, Sabo? Sabo says, What? Luffy replies, You can be sad, Bo. Sabo angrily says, Why would you put it there? Luffy and Ace laugh together. The scene returns to the present. <laughs> Emu fires another black arrow at Sabo, piercing through King Cobra's body and hurting Sabo as well. As he suffers a direct strike, <laughs> blood is poured from Sabo's mouth and is forced to drop King Cobra. Sabo shouts, King Cobra! Dying King Cobra musters all the energy he has left to stand and reads the letter that Lily wrote. The Poneglyphs must be protected. Fly the flag that heralds the world's eventual dawn. Nefertari D. Lily. King Cobra blocks Emu's attack to let Sabo escape. He yells, I am counting on you, Sabo-kun. You must live on. And Emu kills him. Someone shouts, King Cobra. One of the elders questions, who's there? that someone was peeping through the wall, witnessing all that had happened. Ah! Terrified, he takes a step back and says, he's dead. Cobra the senile has gone and got himself killed. I never liked him, but how can I celebrate after witnessing something so terrifying? I stumbled upon the biggest secret in the government's closet. I don't even want to know who that was. They will end me. It turns out he is none other than King Wapol. The scene shifts to the grand round table in the council chamber. It is mentioned that King Cobra and King Wapple are not present yet. It is reported that the two of them will not be attending, and it has been instructed to proceed without them. Hamburger, the king of Ballywood Kingdom, says, Perhaps King Cobra's impassioned speech drained him. Another king comments, Maybe he considered his job done now that the dissolution of warlords has been approved. Someone else says, let us move to the remaining matters on the agenda. Now then, concerning the coalition of the four northern nations calling for independence, the scene shifts. Shirahoshi's big brother, Fukuboshi, says, Shirahoshi, the conference is almost over. Let's go wait at the red port where we won't have to deal with the celestial dunces there. He asks, You okay? Shirahoshi says, I was hoping to say goodbye to Princess Vivi. I wonder where she went. The scene quickly shifts to a guest room in Pangaea Castle where the princess is seen restrained. Vivi says, What's the big idea? You'd better untie me. Whose orders are you following? I'll tell the whole world about this. CP0 Agent Jabra says, Hey, easy there. You are being too forward. Gotta play your cards closer to the vest if you want a shot at being free. You know, you are one feisty chick. Agent Khalifa says, I'm afraid no one is going to help you, princess. Once your disappearance is made known, you will probably leave the rest of your life like a pet. Vivi asks, Is Shirahoshi all right? The other agent replies, Seriously? Now's not the time to worry about others, little missy. The agent added that they received word that more trouble broke out around Shirahoshi earlier, but she apparently came out of the ordeal unscathed. Vivi says, Thank goodness. Jabra thinks about Sai and Leo and says, the punks who ended up assaulting the celestial dragon that tried to kidnap the mermaid princess boldly proclaimed their victory, giving their names and everything. 
The guests in the courtyard were stunned. He also reveals that in the home of the gods, Fujitora's actions helped the revolutionary army free the slaves, and that obviously pissed Ryukugu off. So they went at it. With a series of events that happened, Jabra asks Vivi, What's the deal with this year's reverie? Vivi pays no mind to what Jabra had asked as she thinks about what Khalifa had said earlier. Like a pet, give me a break. Looks like I'm gonna have to do something about this. Then, Vivi detects something on the wall and King Wapal bursts through the wall screaming, Spare me! I didn't see a thing! Vivi sees Wapal and says, This is my chance! as he goes on a tirade. All of the agents are left stunned and perplexed. Bluno asks, What was that? Jabra replies, I think it was King Wapal. One of them suddenly says, Hey, wait a second, Vivi's gone. Vivi is using Wapal as a ride. They meet Wapal's wife, Kinderella, on the way. Kinderella says, Oh, darling, I have been looking for you. Where the devil have you been and who is that young lady with you? Vivi calls out to Wapal, saying, Hey, Wapal, how much further are you going to go? Wapal replies, As far as it takes, I'll run to the ends of the world if I have to. Vivi says, Sounds good to me. Let's go. Kinderella thinks to herself, Don't tell me you are running away with a mistress? Eloping to start a life on the run? And thus, the chapter 1085 concludes. See you in the next video, and please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more One Piece manga chapters and theories.